Wow, what a blessing. Let's stand and thank the Lord for Israel. Just thank him right now. Thank him. All nations will reconcile around Israel. So all you have to remember, it's real simple. Now bless somebody and say, we're glad you're here today. Goodness. I'm glad we have Morningstar, don't you? What a blessing. We're living in some very, very interesting times, and I think it's important that we interpret the times and we redeem the times for days are evil. And uh, these are just interesting, interesting times that uh, God has for us, and it's causing something to happen in each one of us. And you need to know something's happening in you right now. And there's something that you need to allow to happen in you right now. And that's why it, it's important that we realize how the prophetic works. The prophetic works in four dimensions. It starts with you personally. Uh, God's going to work his word through you. Uh, then it moves out corporately, you know. We are a part of each other. That's what happens every time we take communion. And we need each other. We don't have to like each other, but we need each other. Look at somebody and say, I need your gift. <laughs> then it works territorially. The land is where we came from. Therefore, the land becomes very, very important. And how the land becomes full and how we prophesy that plan of fullness that God has to the land becomes very important. Your land becomes very important. Then it works generationally because God intended for, he's a tri-generational God and he intended for what he was doing to be passed from one generation to the other and uh, how he longed for us to carry on his heritage in the earth from one to the other. And covenant becomes very important. I'm just sort of shooting some things at you that you have to have when I was here for the um, uh, education gathering. You, you have to understand God's mind for covenant. And that becomes very important in your understanding and your core values. So in this, and if you're ready to help me show you some things, I want to help you uh, know that we are in a chaotic time. Now, I taught on chaos this year sometimes, and chaos is just uh, given to us so we can speak into it and bring a new order out of it. So don't, don't back away from chaos. Chaos is in your path so you can be used to create order. See, this whole decade that we're living in, the pay decade, I think Misty demonstrated it this morning, uh, it, it's about coming face to face and how you speak what you need to speak. Now, that can give you a quick understanding of where America is. We can't even get the Speaker of the House in place. I mean, it's really that simple. Three of our main judicial branches, the whole era is about the voice and what voice you carry, and our, one of our main branches of this nation can't get its voice going. Now, that should give you a check. It should concern you a little. And so, with that, that's also how you pray when you see something like that. So, in the midst of chaos, you, it, chaos doesn't change your promise. Remember that. Chaos causes you 
to press through layers of things that's stopping your promise from manifesting. Chaos doesn't change your ability to prosper. It causes you to see what is clouding your prosperity. And look at somebody and say, you're going to prosper in a new way. <clears throat> now, this is what I see the Lord doing. And I'm going to start with you, and we're going to work all the way through those four stages. See, see, the Word of God is quick and sharp and powerful than any two-edged sword. Remember, the Lord said this year, we will wear swords on our feet. Well, you're going to have to allow that to be developed in you. Uh, I keep looking over here at some of these younger guys and, and uh, girls, and I, I decree that they're going to allow their feet to be shod correctly this year. Now, and so because the Word of God is sharp, it's got to cut through your spirit and soulish nature. In other words, there's things in us that have to be cut away so we can become. Now look at somebody and say, you're becoming. Doesn't matter how old you are in here. Doesn't matter how young you are. You're becoming. The only, you can, I, I think I, I see with some elder people, they think they've already been. No, if you're still breathing, you're becoming something. Just remember that. And, uh, and your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions is vying for the rule of your spirit. So God has to bring his word to cut through you so that you can reflect his identity because he is the living word. And his spirit has chosen to dwell in you, in your spirit, and work out. So, he's got to do this cutting away through the Word of God. We discern by the Word and by the Spirit. It takes both. It takes Word and Spirit to come into accurate discernment. Now, one of the things happened to me after the Holy Spirit met me when I was 18. Uh, first of all, God came down during the three days that the Holy Spirit visited me and revealed himself to me as God of Israel. So it's never been a question for me about his sovereign plan and his first choice to form a nation called Israel, the Hebrew people. Now, but then he told me something else when I, because I was in college and, and uh, I was at A&M, uh, Texas A&M, a little, there's got to be a whoop somewhere in here. And uh, he told me to, that he wanted me to learn to read the word without opening the book. And what that meant was, he knew my call better than me and all the places I would be going and he didn't want me not to have my Bible study just because I didn't have the graph a book so he said I want you to be able to read the book without having the graph a well that's been my lifelong journey is reading the book yesterday knowing Chris was 39 i I read in my heart the 39s throughout the Word of God. See, and I'm looking at this guy in the plaid shirt. Stand up for a minute. Uh, you have a desire for the Word. I see it on you. You have a longing for the Word. And the Lord says, don't let discouragement deter you from the Word because there's a plan for you and he has a plan for you to speak in days ahead. Therefore, you're going to have to build a bridge from your past into the future and that word will build that bridge and you will be able to walk in a way you've never walked before because he is going to deposit his word in you. There's going to be, and I, I see something around you, there's lightning strikes coming into you.
You're going to have to allow the heat of the lightning strikes to come into you to activate that which he's calling you to do. So don't shy away from the lightning. Become the lightning, the Lord says. Now, uh, now with that, remember in this advanced prophetic gathering there's six words linked with the prophetic and I, I don't want to teach on the prophetic I want to get to you when he's cutting through you and he's separating you out he's trying to allow himself to come through you in a way that he's never come through you and uh, one prophetic word is nave nave it's it's where he's got to cut something through you so that river or that spring bubbles up. A lot of us are bubblers. Look at somebody and say, you need to be a little more bubbly. <laughs> and then there's that prophetic word, rohai. Rohi means you're going to be looking at something and see what he wants you to see. And, and you're going to have to get past some things thinking you're a little crazy because you can see into a different dimension. But you can't leave reality. That's what's so different about walking in different dimensions. You have to remain in reality. And John chapter 4 says that reality is when we worship in spirit and truth. It takes both. Then there's that cho hosan, or chosen it, from Texas. We just use the C-H. And uh, it's where you're staring at something, you go into a trance, dream state is linked with this, and all of a sudden you're communicating. It's almost like you can be awake, but you're dreaming. And God is showing you in detail what's going to happen. But it is a prophetic state. And then there's the word natav. That means you're going to say something, it's going to cut loose, and it's going to drip down like water on everybody in the midst. Everybody you're talking to gets wet. I love it. Preachers, a lot of preachers are prophetic. They don't like to call themselves prophets, but they're prophesying using that preaching power to open up the heaven. And when you're sitting under that preaching, that anointing preaching, we all get wet. I love it. Then there's that prophetese we hear about in the New Testament. That's where you can interpret events, but you can also tell the future. You are aware God did not leave the future to the diviners and the fortune tellers. All he wanted us to do was to be purified in a way that we could be the best in saying what was going to happen. I always look at, and, and you know, I've had so many people in my life, and you know, witches, warlocks, everybody. I, I mean, you know, and then there's my family. And, uh, and so, you know, I don't shy away from people, no matter who they are. And I always look at them and say, well, tell me about yourself. And then I try to find a more excellent way to help them become what they were supposed to be. Always remember, there's a more excellent way. You can only find that through love. Can't find it any other way. Um, we had one group run up to me one time at a conference. There's five lesbians back there. And I said, where, you want them, where else you want them to be? I mean, we need to know we are meant to help everybody that comes in our path with the good news. Don't run people off just because they've sinned before. 
now or else we all going to be leaving sooner or later, you know. <laughs> now, here's the point. Then there's that prophet that is rising today in an incredible way, the Shamar prophet. That's that prophet who has to interact in various dimensions by knowing the word that has been spoken knowing the timing to pull that word down into reality. Think Elijah. He prophesied it wouldn't rain for three and a half years, but he had to know when he had to pull the rain out of heaven also. This is the type of prophet that's coming forth, and they watch after the word, but they interact with heaven in a way to open it up so angelic help can come down to perform the word. That's the anointing I want to leave on you today. And so, really, the thing that we're finding that's happening Last year, is uh, it was a year of divine recovery. We were becoming what we need to be before we get to the gate this year. In other words, God's been working on you to get you up to a new entry place. And that's what this year is about. And with that, you've been becoming a new sharp threshing instrument with teeth. In other words, he told Jacob that, and he said, Jacob, you're going to shift from being a worm into this thresher that's going to go back and look at the mountains of your past and thresh them down and break them into chaff. And so there's this identity crisis that we've been in, but we've been coming in to who we're going to be. See, it's not about what you do, it's about who you are. And that's what's so important. And so because this will be the year that this kingdom plan that God has for us gets drawn out of us so we become a force we've never been before. Look at somebody next to you and say, you're a force waiting to happen. Now, so when we get to the door, go ahead and show that, when we get to the door, that force you have this year coming up out of you, when you decree it, all of a sudden, that door opens up. Open sesame, if you want to just be simple the way to think about it. You are being brought. You're moving from Psalms 23 to Psalms 24. That Psalms 23 is about a path of prosperity that your enemies will even serve you. But you have to, in Psalms 23 is embedded, you will have to understand the feast and Chagog so that your enemies, even at their table, they'll give you what you need. And then... You're becoming that so when you get to the gate and the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, you're going to go through and decree the plan of fullness. Now that brings me into this advanced prophetic conference. There's lots of things this year that we've been prophesying that will become full. Fullness is a time word, plethora. It means that things have aligned in such a way that they are becoming noticeable. They are manifesting. And that's why the watchman prophet becomes so important. Now, if you, if you want a passage to turn with me, and I'll just uh, refer to it, it's 2 Chronicles 20. 
Because, see, here's what's going to happen at your new door. You're going to have to unravel a threefold cord because at the door, at the threshold of a gate, at the threshold of the door, uh, Pythos lays there waiting to strangle. So some way or another, you've got to unravel that pytho spirit that's keeping you from crossing the threshold. And you can't back away from pythos. It's a constricting spirit linked with divination that wants to squeeze your voice out. And so here at this gate that we're up to this year, We've got to also unravel this threefold cord. You're going to have to do it for your life. You're going to have to see how poverty, how uh, infirmity, and how religion have wrapped you up in a way that you can't break through. And you're going to decree breakthrough past that threefold cord. Every family bloodline has a portion of it. It has to be unraveled. I love what my wife told me years ago. She said, you can go all over the world and talk about demons because your family had them all. <laughs> well, they did. Well, I, I, I knew them well. Never had a problem with the supernatural. My family were either spiritist or Pentecostal. And I had to sort through that growing up. And you have an evil inheritance, you have a godly inheritance, you have to untangle it so that you can get into the fullness of what God's trying to do with you. Now, with that, what you're seeing happen worldwide is really the same thing. Here in Second Chronicles chapter 20, the, the Moabites... The, the men, Menunites and the uh, Ammonites are coming against Israel. It's a threefold cord. All you've got to do to understand what's going on in the world is look, you've got Israel centered with Russia, Iran, uh, Syria, and then there's Israel, covenant. And there's that threefold cord, Hezbollah, Hamas, trying to block them at both gates. All right? It's easy. Then you've got Russia, Ukraine. I remember in 2008 going to Ukraine, meeting with leaders, writing down the progression Russia would take to move back into its power. But Ukraine, you've got this breadbasket. And there's, that's a supply line. And then notice U.S. is in here somewhere. We're going to visit Israel. We're going to visit Ukraine. Then you've got China. I saw it on the screen last night. You're going to see that China loves that little jewel called Taiwan in such a way they want to get it. Well, we've made alliances with all these. So really, there's some force right now that we have to untangle with this threefold cord if we're going to see the Lord rise up in the midst of this. Well, it's got to be untangled. You can't do it. And that was the same thing here. And when Jehoshaphat saw these three confederated demonic forces coming against him, he, it said he got afraid. Well, fear can be a good emotion if you do something with it. Only if a spirit of fear attaches to the emotion of fear will you be overtaken and controlled by it. So what 
Jehoshaphat did. He got down, he began to pray, and he began to talk to the Lord. He called a fast for the people. He moved from individual to corporate. And then in the midst of it, he said, Lord, look at this. This thing is coming against your inheritance that you have given us. That's what you want to know the bottom line is. The enemy is going to always try to take what you're supposed to have. The enemy is always going to try to get your blessings for himself. It's real simple. So you're going to, ha- and see, what it talks about is over in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 is how you have this portion here and the enemy wants to take the upper hand over your portion. You need to stop right now and say, get your hand out of my stuff. <laughs> see, that's what's really happening worldwide. God has a people rising up that's telling the enemy, get your hand out of his stuff here on earth. That's you. I look at somebody and say, I think he's talking about you. (laughs) And you have to be able to say it with great authority. So what, what he told and so he called this fast, and all of a sudden the prophetic comes down. And this prophet rises up out of nowhere and says, The battle is not yours, Jehoshaphat, it's the Lord's. But then he said one more thing. He said, All you've got to do is go stand at a certain place and worship. Now, Here's my word to all of us. We're going to have to know where to stand right now and where to worship. It's really that simple. He had to go to the river Ziv. The choir had to go with him. The singers had to go with him. The tabernacle of David in the earth realm had to go to this place, start worshiping, and then he created chaos in the enemy. He's saying the same thing to every one of us. All you got to know this year is when I tell you where to stand, stand and worship. Then the next thing is you're going to have to know what foundation you're standing on. You can't be a roaming uh, antelope this year you're going to have to know where you're lined and how you, what you're standing on at because see this sword is God's sword this year and it's coming down and it's dividing out double mindedness so you're going to have to know what you are really excited to stand on and who you're really excited to stand with It can't be stopped this year, people. You're going to hear pro-Palestinians. You're going to hear pro-everything this year. But you're also going to know that there is a force that God is pulling together to have us stand together. And when he calls for us to rise up, the power we have will change the course of the world. Don't count out God and his people. We're we're moving good. So that's why what the Lord's been doing to restore the foundation here on earth, go ahead and let's look at it, what to restore the foundation here on earth he's getting it in order first apostles second prophets third teachers then comes the miracle workers and the healers that's the evangelistic thrust that he'll bring out then comes the administration and then I'm going to tell you something else he's going to restore tongues back to his people 
and with tongues come interpretation and that's where that prophetic dimension really gets spooky to the church and the religious world. When somebody speaks in tongues, I don't hear tongues, I hear words. God does not speak in English. God is not white. God is spirit and communicates to our spirit man. And so what he's doing is he's mustering an incredible army right now here in the earth who knows how to stand. Administrators are part of what he needs to end the chaos. New order is created, and he has to have administrators set him, setting that order in place. Now, here's what Misty led us in worship over this morning. See, this year is about a divine, this whole decade is about a divine evaluation and face-off. I, I love how Missy, through her le leadership and worship, brought us face-to-face -face with the Lord. See, everything she did in worship, and I always watch how Judah goes first, she brought us into this intimate place, but then she also recognized Lord Sabaoth in that song with the host. And both of those dimensions are very important as we move forward because in a season of visitation, evaluation happens. He is looking at us. He's evaluating us. It's divine. It can't be stopped because the word visitation is linked with the whole concept of being an auditor. And he's auditing how we're moving. He does that with the ecclesia periodically. Remember, that's what he did when he visited John in the book of Revelation. He came down and he said, here's those seven key apostolic centers that have formed over the last 70 years. And I'm going to evaluate each one of them. I'm going to say what they've done well. And he, finds, he found something good each one of them had done. You know, that's how God works. He's not going to point out how bad we are first. He's going to find something good about you. Look at somebody and say, I know it's there in you. He'll find it. He doesn't jump on you and start saying how bad you are and how bad your mama was and how bad your daddy was. He said, I know you have this about you. And then he said, now, you've done this wrong, so you're going to have to recognize this is stopping you from advancing in your future. But then if all seven of those key apostolic centers, he said to them, he said, you can overcome if you hear what the Spirit is saying to the church and do this. And so he's coming down this year and there's this divine evaluation that he's doing in his people, his ecclesia. That was after 70 years. You remember when he first prophesied about the ecclesia to his disciples in Matthew 16? They didn't even know what he was talking about. It took them 70 years before he could evaluate it. And then he evaluated what formed from that prophecy when Peter prophesied. Peter tapped in. Listen, if Peter can tap in, any of us can tap in. Peter tapped in. He said, you're the Meshach, you're the Messiah. And he said, only Father could have shown you that. Now, 15 minutes later, he was telling Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. So, you know, that's why our identity is so important. You got to get it, some things settled in you. And he, because Peter had so much emotion and so much human reasoning from his past, he couldn't get settled in what he had just seen. God being there on earth with him. 
the Mashat, the anointed one. And so what, what happened, though, after that was the Lord said to him, come up here, John. We've talked about everything in the earth realm. We've got to go further than this. So come up here. I'm going to show you into the future. See, that's the advanced prophetic. That's the gathering we're in. Come up here. I'm going to show you into the future so you can wear breakthrough in the earth when you leave. You can wear the glory for what you glimpse into. And from there, he shows John us. So now we're having to become what he said we would be. Isn't that amazing? that he had that much faith to tell John what we would be like today and what we would be going through. And see, when I'm talking about the door of entry, you can't just think this way. Go ahead and show that next one. You have to think, I got to go up. I got to go up into a realm, into Father's throne room so I can come back down and exercise what I see so get ready this year you going up that's one of the doors you're going through this year you're going into a different level of revelation and you're going to have to understand revelation is at the gate and so, with that, this is what the Lord wants to do. He wants this new Issachar watchman movement that has begun last year to come into a maturity. And he wants you to put on this new Shamar watchman anointing so when we hear words like, uh, uh, Prophet Chris said earlier uh, and we all heard on the web we know how to watch after that word and so this is the type of anointing that he is bringing forth now with that there is a shift in the voice of the prophets we're shifting. I know the last three and a half years I have gone through an identity shift. Think about it, traveling 550,000 miles a year, all of a sudden God shuts all that down in March 2020, and he said, you're going to start back over in your backyard. And there would be certain days I would just pray in tongues for three hours. And I'm not a big tonguer. I interpret. But for three hours, I would pray in tongues. And then all of a sudden, I felt him redoing me. That's why I, I'm not crazy about anybody introducing me with all the accolades of the past because I'm just becoming. We're changing. Tell somebody, you are changing so rapidly. It's a metamorphosis going on. You're breaking out of that cocoon. You're spreading your wings. We're looking good. And our voice is shifting. See, that was the purpose of this decade in the earth realm was to work with us to shift our voice. And the prophets can see and say the future. So we're going to know what's going to happen before it happens. 
but we've got to be very accurate because of the warfare chaos that's in the earth realm. We can't be prophesying out of emotion. We can't be prophesying out of fear. We just have to be matter of fact. This will happen. For instance, the first time one of those missiles hits one of those ships that we have out in the ocean that we sent over for Israel, we're going to have a big mess on our hands. I got up and prayed for the ships this morning. And the enemy would love to do that because the enemy changes times and laws. That's why we have to understand timing because the enemy is moving so strong in the earth realm to change time. Daniel chapter 7. The watchman watches after the word so they can announce it's time. Everybody say out loud, it's time. And so the watchman has to watch God, watch the earth realm, watch the heavens, and watch the enemy so that we can communicate God's timing. Now, this happened in South Carolina, and this is why I want to show it. Because there's some portal over South Carolina every time I come that opens up and I'm capable of going into a place not as strong in North Carolina as it is South Carolina for me and with that we were at the Citadel back last year last August and that sheep was was speaking, it was really the first time they had, they had had an outside meeting at the Citadel. And all of a sudden, God caught me up. You know, I mean, it's a, I don't know how to tell you, it's a swoosh. Look at somebody and say, get ready, there, you, he can swoosh you. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, swoosh. You just got to go with it when that happens. And let me say this. You have to get beyond your human reasoning. You can't try to understand what is happening because understanding will come eventually. And he swooshed me up and he showed me these four incredible angelic hosts surrounding all the territory linked with America. North, south, east, and west. Those are seraphim angels. They were surrounding, they were standing there. I had seen one prior, I wrote about it in uh, uh, Passover Prophecies, and it was God's harvest angel. And he explained the war to me. That had been three years prior. Then all of a sudden, these territorial angelic hosts came in and fully surrounded America. Now, I want you to look at somebody and say, we are surrounded. But it's not by the enemy. Now, I knew immediately there were 51 of these angels and I knew each angel had an assignment to each state in America. They all had their sword in their sheath. We said that was a good sign because when the sword's pulled out, it's war. But the Lord said by this Passover that we're coming to, they will visit each state. And whether they pull their sword out or whether they loose that glory help that is needed in that state 
is yet to be found or seen. That's why I can always go back to Chris's word with the $50 bill because, remember, God had caught me up in New Jersey and shown me the 50 states. 21 were in covenant with him. Two were hanging in the balance, and the rest weren't. Uh, it's all recorded. Now, what you can expect to happen by Passover is for this visitation and evaluation that we're in to become much stronger. State by state by state. And then once every state had been visited in God's timing, then they swarmed in on our state, our capital in D.C. And listen to me. There's some change that's coming. You don't have to fret in it. You don't have to get in big arguments about it. But listen, these swords are sharpened. You say, well, where do I fit in that? He's just working on you. You just got to know where to stand and what, what to stand on. Look at the, Look at somebody and say, this all sounds real simple to me. All I got to do is know where to go stand and worship and all I've got to know is who to stand with. Is this so hard? And that's what's being sorted out worldwide. Where are you going to stand in worship and who are you going to stand with? Well, see, I'm going to stand with Israel. I'm going to stand on the foundation of apostles of him as the chief cornerstone with apostles and prophets. You can't just stand pastorally without being connected to the chief cornerstone, apostles and prophets. It's becoming more and more clear for each one of us as we advance. Now, one of the things we're going to do to help you is on our website, we're going to go back. You remember that book Dutch and I, Dutch Sheets and I wrote when we went to all the 50 states? We want to go back and recap the history of a state, the redemptive call of the state, the prophetic history of the state, and then prophesy to it. But I'm just going to do that. It'll just be a reference. You can just go visit it when you're trying to pray through. But I do want to say, here in South Carolina, there's a peculiar portal. For me to get this, see it so clearly, and then you can go to Dutch's website because his brother got visited and saw the same thing. God does not do anything without showing two or more witnesses like that. So, we're being evaluated. Now, with that, I want to I go a little deeper into what Misty was leading us in worship over. See, what this said to me was Lord Sabaoth was visiting surrounding America and going to visit us. And we sing about him all the time. But I'm not sure we fully know him. See, he's the one who sends help and he actually holds sways, sway over how things are going to go. Now, that's why we become like the fulcrum of the seesaw. how we throw in 
our identity and agreement here on earth is how he's going to sway things. Does that make sense to you? He, it, it, things just aren't going to go. We have a say in how they go based upon where we stand, who we stand with, and what we say. It's just amazing this year. Lord Sabaoth, see, Lord Sabaoth is the God of the armies, the God of warfare. He's the God of the stars. He named all the stars. Quit trying to just be earthbound. Listen, he is the God of this universe that we live in. He named the stars. They worked for Joshua. They're going to have to work for us in days ahead. So you're going to have to know how to make decrees. Another name for Lord Sabbath is he is the Lord of the able. In other words, he is able. And he can enable you. Now, he is evaluating America in the coming year. That's what Chris is talking about. He's the God of the armies. He's the God of the host of heaven, but he's the God of the army here on earth. And what he is saying to us is there's a divine alignment coming this year this coming year in this particular four year at the gate and we're going to have to align with him. He has to have us both working together. See, David's biggest mistake, he wasn't just having an affair with Bathsheba. Uh, it wasn't just touching the R. He made some big mistakes. Uh, it was when he decided to number the armies of the earth. Disastrous. Because you know what really happened to him was he cut off heaven's help and just went earthbound. We're not doing that. We don't have enough weapons. And everybody complaining about Hamas and all the supplies being cut off, they still have enough weapons to keep shooting. God is dealing with this thing in a heavenly realm. And you know what? He might wake you up in the middle of the night and say, it's up to you what you decree. There is a scripture that says, Command ye me, saith the Lord. He might choose not to deal with all the stuff you've been trying to deal with. He might say, We'll work on that next week. I need you now to do this. I know you drink too much coffee, I know you take a little nip occasionally. I need you now to decree. I know you eat one dessert you're not supposed to be eating. I know all that. We're not working on that this week. I need your voice. We have about worn him out trying to get perfect. I told my mother and my wife one time, I said, I will never be as good as y'all. <laughs> y'all can do, you do everything right. You're, you can do everything. Therefore, you do everything. And I'll just travel. <laughs> they said, okay, it's a deal. <laughs> Pam and I wrote two books together. One book, the, the Chosen said, how in the world? You, you write, you co-author books, and y'all always blend your work. This book you and Pam wrote together, it, it, 
how, do you, how have y'all lived together for 40 years? And Pam was sitting there, and she said, it's real simple. He's traveled for 40 years. She said, we're just going to let Pam do the first half of the book, and you do the last half. But we need each other. My wife and I are not complete without each other. We see things from different perspectives. We interject from different perspectives. We have different talents. That's what God's doing with all of us. You don't want to be running with everybody just like you. Ooh, that sounds boring. Now, he is the God who will come to our defense. And he's the God of hosts who commands the glory change. Now, I want to say to you, he is commanding the glory change right now. Now, he's the divine warrior. See, when we're singing about Lord Sabaoth, we must know that it is a wartime. It's him who's establishing his kingdom in the earth. His kingdom dwells in you, and what he's doing is he's coming to your gate. Because the king has access. He, he, he will come down when the taunting of the enemy gets so loud. He says, wait a minute, I don't want to hear that any longer. See, that's what he did with David. Sent him in on the battlefield. Goliath had prophesied for 40 days how they were going to be defeated, and David just went in and said, why are y'all listening to this? That's what's going to happen with a lot of us. We're just going to go in. And we're going to be sitting at a place and all of a sudden we're going to say, why are we listening to this? But then what Chris quoted to us this morning, we've got to be still to watch. Being still is the hardest level of spiritual warfare. You have to still your emotions. You have to stop your thoughts. I got diagnosed, I went blind in 1979 and got a terrible diagnosis. And when the doctor came in and he told me the diagnosis, he, he left and went out and I was sitting there in the dark. And I said, Lord, don't let me think. I refuse to have a thought. Quieten my mind. And then the Lord said this to me, this is for my glory. I used to do art every Friday night for Shabbat, and we were over painting with these four other couples, then we would pray, and sometimes we'd go to two in the morning. And all of a sudden, of course, I was... That night was not a good night because I couldn't see. I could see a portion out of this eye, but not at all out of this eye. I was painting this painting, and I got frustrated, and I went and laid down on the couch. My wife came over and said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm, I can't handle it. And she said, we didn't come over here to talk about what you're going through. We came over here to paint a picture. She said, what is your real problem? I said, she said, the Lord spoke to you and said it's for his glory. I said, I could die for his glory. <laughs> she said, well, good, get past that and then finish your painting. <laughs> See, that's how your brain starts going crazy with you, especially in warfare. I finished the painting. My brother still has that painting. That house had no horizon line that was right. That house had no right perspective with the wind blowing across the tree. And he said, 
it would cost a million dollars for somebody to take that painting from him. He said, at that point, that was my life, and you painted it. I thought, well, I had to get blind to relate to you, so. <laughs> now, he's the commander-in-chief. He will protect. Remember that. He's the commander-in-chief. Now, here's a couple more things before we go this morning. In this season, it's a time together. Meetings like this are kingdom ecclesia meetings. You have to be at the right meeting at the right time because see church means gathering it means fellowship but it also means strategeo it's an army so these gatherings are army gatherings look at somebody and say I wasn't sure I was aware of that when I signed up for it but <laughs> these are army gatherings See, there's this new church. We have not been in a church building season. We've been in an unlocking kingdom season, but now starting this year, he starts reestablishing and evaluating the foundation of what's being built for the future. Now, young, guy, young guys and girls, that's important for you. Because he came down while I was reading, you know, I, I, I read the word. I, I'm an early riser, so I read and I digest the word and, and really spend time with him. And then as I'm spending time with him, he makes my prayer list every day. I do not come to him with a prayer list. He makes it. Usually I find those who make my prayer list, ooh, they've got something really going on they need prayed through. But I was reading Ezekiel. Now, I have read Ezekiel so many times in my life, and this is what I want you to know about the living word. This is a person here. It's not a book. And he's going to show you something of his person every time he opens it. Don't think you know everything about him. Don't treat this like a graphe book. It's logos. Then, being logos, it can become rhema, where all of a sudden it quickens in you. It's like the quickening power of a fetus when it, a, a woman first feels it moving. And then it can become zoe where it becomes the life sword that goes out of you. And here in Ezekiel 43, I was reading it and all of a sudden he quickened verse 12 to me and I cannot tell you how many times I've read this, but he quickened it and he said this to me. Let me just read you. This is the law of the house of the Lord. The whole area round about on the top of the mountain, Mount Moriah, shall be most holy, separated, set apart. Behold, this is the law of of the house of the Lord. And all of a sudden, the Lord said to me, I'm watching my house this year. I'm watching what's been planted where my house needs to be. And that's a word. Because he said, I activate the laws that control the earth. Laws of gravity, if, you, if I jump. Well, if I jump, I'm probably going to break something, but you go, there's a law. He is over. He's also over laws of the Spirit. But he is activating the law of the house this year. That means 
what we know as church will be fully evaluated and reformed. That's why you have to find remnant gatherings like this. Now, I don't want to teach on the law of the house, but he gave me 20 points about the law of the house, what he'll be doing. Finally, if you are entering and when you get to your gate, all you have to do is do this. All you have to do is stand at the gate daily and he's going to speak to you. So let's review to this morning at this advanced prophetic gathering. He's cutting things loose so your voice can come out in a new way. All he's saying is you're going to have to know where to stand and worship and when you get into a confusion or when fear hits you, remember to ask him where to stand and worship. Now, he might tell you go stand in the grocery store. But if he tells you that, go to the grocery store. Get on the frozen food aisle and stand. I don't know what you're going to have to hear him tell you just like he told Jehoshaphat, and then your enemies are going to go into disarray. You're going to have to know where you're standing and who you're standing with. That's why God's evaluating relationships right now. You're going to have to know that Lord Sabo, the commander-in-chief, has surrounded America. I saw it from South Carolina. This is the first time I've been back to South Carolina to say what I saw. There's a reason he showed it to me in South Carolina. There's a reason he wanted it said in South Carolina. I know him. Lord Sabaoth has surrounded what we call America because believe it or not, America is still dear to it. But he is going to bring a sword. State by state by state. You will see manifestations of that sword starting by April of next year. Don't let these divisions you're seeing. The divisions you're seeing can't be stopped because the Lord said, I'm going to deal with double-mindedness. I'm going to make sure you know where you're supposed to stand. You will no longer be hung between two opinions that word is Pesach. It's the same word as Passover. You're going to either limp forward or leap forward. That's what the word means. Look at somebody and said, I think I'm going to choose to leap. <laughs> and then... The law of the house has been made active in the earth. So don't hang on to a lot of your traditions from past church seasons. I mean, God, God knows there's certain things he wants to bring forth with him and there's certain things he wants left behind. And all you got to do at your gate daily, that gate of revelation, is listen carefully 
and he'll give you a word that'll produce joy in you. Joy will produce strength in you. Strength is the power to withstand attack. And the joy of the Lord will be our strength, and all of a sudden, we're going to be walking in victory and triumph. Let's all stand up. It's really very easy this year. Now, I want you to do one thing. I want you to put your hand on your mind. Your mind's right here. Your brain, we'll get to it later. But put your hand on your mind right now. The pure in heart see God. All of you right now, Father, we thank you that you are cutting away things that's stopping new vision. Old emotions. Old teachings. Oh, thought processes. Now, Father, I activate that seer watchman anointing from our heart. I call forth in this advanced prophetic gathering an advancement from your army. Now put a hand on your head. Now tell your brain to line up. <laughs> the heart thinketh. Fill your heart with the Word of God, the Spirit of God, and let His glory rise up and redo those cognitive processes that would love to ensnare you this year and keep you from having the right perspective. Lord, I bless this place. I bless this gathering. I bless everyone in it. And I say, loose this new anointing over each one of us in Jesus' name. Now throw your hands up and give him a shout and say, here I am. Whoa. Say, here I am, Lord, I'm ready to go.